Good morning, everyone. I'm back. This is Nicole Ali with another video. This one about the Austin bombings. Now, we already know there were three people killed, um, three different incidents that occurred where a black man was killed, a 17-year-old young man, a musical prodigy, very intelligent, very bright young man was killed. I believe with his mother not too far away they were in the house and a 70 something year old Hispanic woman was killed as well but the package that she received was not meant for her it was meant for a black woman that lived next door to her so now they have another bombing in Austin and I hadn't gone into detail about this about any of them I was just um, listening to other people's videos and trying to glean more information before I made a video about it. I'm not going to have much commentary. Maybe I'll do commentary on a live video. Um, I did one yesterday about discernment. I would like to do another one about discernment because I think that's something we need in, the black, in black society right now. Um, it's very important. But I let this video play is from CNN and it just posted a few hours ago I just got up like maybe an hour and a half ago so I'll let this play and that'll be the end of the video let's um let's listen to you guys it sounds like they're gonna get started here momentarily with details again that the Austin serial bomber closed in on him and he is dead Good morning. Thank you all for coming out here this morning. Uh, my name is Brian Manley. I'm the chief of police of the Austin Police Department. I have Fred Milanowski here, the special agent in charge for ATF. Christopher Combs, the special agent in charge for the FBI. I have Austin Mayor Steve Adler and City Manager Spencer Cronk and several other members of uh, Assistant City Manager Ray Ariano and several members of the Austin Police Department's executive team. I think you all are aware and our community is well aware that it has been a long, almost three weeks for the community of Austin. Okay. If you listen to what he just said, I'm sorry I'm stopping it, but I had to stop it. Just, you know, this is some bullshit. What they're talking about. He just mentioned all these people, ATF, FBI, Homeland Security, Austin Police Department, Austin whatever. And all of y'all motherfuckers couldn't catch this dude. Oh, I forgot. Wait. I had my eyes closed. I'm sorry. I didn't see they were all white men. I did I just didn't see that. But um, excuse me for my ignorance. Excuse me for, for having my eyes closed, I guess. Apparently, I must have looked away and didn't see they were all white. So that could be one thing. But let me pause this real quick. Just for a second, y'all. Okay, I'm back. Let me go ahead and continue. I'll try not to interrupt. Sorry about that. As we have dealt with package bombs and other types of bombs that have been placed throughout our community, we have seen members of our community that have lost their lives and others whose lives have been forever changed due to significant injuries. We have talked many times over the past couple of weeks about the level of partnership that has taken place with our federal officials, our local officials, and our police department to bring this to an end. And through all of this hard work, we identified several leads throughout the course of the weeks. But beginning within the past 24 to 36 hours, we started getting information on one person of interest that we continue to work on and continue to develop. And as we continue to do our investigations, this person of interest ultimately moved to being a suspect. And that's what we started focusing on was his involvement in these crimes. Late last night and early this morning, we felt very confident that this was the suspect in the bombing incidents that took place in Austin. We had surveillance teams looking for this suspect, and we ultimately located the vehicle that this suspect was known to be driving, and witnesses told us he was driving. And in fact, we found that at a hotel right up the road here in Round Rock. 
we had multiple officers from both the police department and our federal partners that took up positions around the hotel awaiting the arrival of our tactical teams because we wanted to have ballistic vehicles here so we could attempt to take this suspect into custody as safely as possible. While we were waiting for those vehicles to get here, much time had passed and the vehicle started to drive away. We began following the vehicle, again, waiting to get the tactical uh, vehicles here so we could take this, uh, make a stop. However, the vehicle ended up stopping in the bar ditch on the side of the road behind us. As members of the Austin Police Department SWAT team approached the vehicle, the suspect detonated a bomb inside the vehicle, knocking one of our SWAT officers back and one of our SWAT officers fired at the suspect as well. The suspect is deceased uh, and has significant injuries from a blast that occurred from detonating a bomb inside his vehicle. We cannot name the suspect at this time because he has not been positively identified yet by the medical examiner and next of kin have not yet been notified. So there will be a lengthy investigation that will take place regarding the officer involved shooting. The investigation will be conducted by. And they have to sweep all of his social media as well. That's what they're not going to say. You're dealing with, sorry for the interruption again. You're dealing with the ATF, Homeland Security, FBI, possibly <clears throat> other forms of government. And not only in Austin, but federal, state forms of government so they have to sweep his social media so when they put his name out and people go straight to social media to try to find him it's going to be very difficult to find anything about him they're going to shut down all the social media so if you could please try to find information more information on the suspect's name or either the location where this occurred if you live in Austin I know one of my subscribers uh, Chijoke he lives in Austin. If you could try to get more information from the local media, because this is on CNN, this is national, international, national media, that would be great. The Austin Police Department's Internal Affairs Unit with the Austin uh, Police Monitor participating as well for a review of compliance with departmental policy. There will be a concurrent criminal investigation that will take place by the Texas Rangers of the incident that occurred here tonight. Again, this is the culmination of three very long weeks for our community. And throughout these weeks, we've talked about the importance of remaining vigilant and looking out for each other. I want to continue that message as we stand here this morning, though, because we don't know where this suspect has spent his last 24 hours, and therefore we still need to remain vigilant to ensure that no other packages or devices have been left through the community. So as we go through the day today, we want the community to remain vigilant, but I also want to look at where we are now in Round Rock and remind our neighboring communities of Round Rock and Cedar Park and the other cities that we do not know where he has been in the past 24 hours and you, we need your communities to remain vigilant as well. And again, if you see something that looks suspicious, if you see something that's out of place, if you see something that gives you concern, call 911 and let us know so that we don't experience any more tragedies in our communities because we've had far too many over the past three weeks. I again want to thank the tremendous support and participation that we have had from our federal partners. And since this is still an ongoing investigation, we're not going to release a lot of the specific uh, details that led to the incidents that occurred tonight. We did have one officer who was injured when that bomb detonated as he approached the vehicle, suffering minor injuries. And then we had one officer, as I mentioned early, that fired his weapon at the suspect. That officer has been with the Austin Police Department for 11 years and again is a member of our SWAT team.
as is our standard practice, he will be placed on administrative duty while we conduct the necessary investigations into what happened here. Uh, I'm now going to turn it over for comments to Special Agent uh, Maliski of the uh, ATF. Thank you. Um, the unprecedented level of cooperation and partnership from the law enforcement agencies at the local, state, and federal level um, allowed each of our agencies to bring a skill set, different skill set to bear um, and identify this subject. And uh, fortunately tonight, we're able to bring this part of the investigation to a close. I also want to uh, thank the public who continue to support us and cooperate with us and continue to, to send in tips. Um, and as the chief said, we want them to, to continue to be vigilant. Uh, we are concerned that there still may be other devices out there. We want to make sure that if people see suspicious packages or bags, um, they continue to call 911 and report that to the police um, so we can respond and deal with those packages. Thank you. I'd like to say today is a great day for law enforcement. I'd like to thank the partners. There's an exceptional relationship here in Texas and particularly in Austin. Chief Manley did an unbelievable job. The federal government brought the full resources of federal law enforcement here to solve this and to stop the injuring and the killing that was occurring. As the chief said, we're not done yet. It's a long day ahead. Uh, we are concerned that there may be other packages that are still out there. We need the public to remain vigilant, especially today as we go through this investigation. We will be here as long as it takes with our partners to figure out exactly what happened why it happened and how it happened. And we're committed to staying here with the Austin Police Department for as long as it takes to make sure we understand exactly what happened here. Uh, I'd just like to say this is what law enforcement does every day in this country. The brave men and women of the Austin Police Department put their lives on the line tonight to stop this man from setting off bombs. As the chief said, one of their officers was hurt approaching the suspect as he detonated a second device. That's what law enforcement does every day in this country. They put their lives on the line to make sure that all of us are safe. And I'd like to commend the chief and his brave men and women that approached that subject's vehicle and stopped the subject from hurting anybody else. Thank you very much. I understand that the investigation is uh, continuing and that everyone still is urged to be vigilant and look for things that are out of place. But that said, uh, gentlemen, uh, on behalf of an incredibly thankful community, I just want to say thank you. And if you would pass that on to the, to the men and women uh, that you work with. Uh, uh, Chief Manley, uh, to you and to your officers, to this literally army of both neighboring cities and state and federal agencies. Thank you. And I'd just like to close with just really a thought for the families in our community who lost loved ones or who had loved ones seriously hurt in these incidents. Our heart remains with you as you go through your healing process and your time of sorrow, and we stand by you and with you in your time of need. And with that, we'll open it up for questions. Chief, Chief was the suspect in Austin resident? Chief, was the suspect in Austin resident? involved? Are you still looking for other individuals who may be connected to this one? Or was this a lone wolf? This investigation is still underway, so we cannot say that this was a act, an individual acting on their own. That's why this investigation will continue through the through the day or days coming. Without naming the suspect, can you give us at least some biographical details? Of rough age was he an Austin resident? The individual involved in this incident was a 24-year-old white male, and we're not going to give out any information regarding his residence. Any accomplices? Sorry, maybe you covered this, but any accomplices? 
as I said, as I said, this investigation is ongoing. We want to make sure that we have confirmed that he either acted alone or if there were any accomplices that we identify them. Does this date back, this individual date back to March 2nd? We believe that this individual is responsible for all incidents that have taken place in Austin starting on March 2nd, those that occurred since then as well. Okay, so that's the end of the video, and you can see other videos below when you go to watch this. Um, just when it's playing, for instance, let's go back. Duty while we conduct the necessary. You see them beneath. Just pull that up and scroll over. Now, and they may have different things pop up beneath, but it's all based on what you've watched. So just scroll across. I don't know if people have this option on their phones. Maybe you do uh, on a desktop computer or laptop. It will be different. It will be to the side, to the right, perhaps. Um, but yeah, do that and you'll be able to get more information. As they said, it was a 24 year old white male. I'm not surprised, of course. You probably heard me say, of course. My condolences go out to the families of the victims of this terrorist. I noticed that they did not call him a terrorist, but that's what this is. You're sending bombs through the mail. That's an act of terrorism. You're killing people. And the motive seems to be more than just a hate crime. It seems to be an act of racial terrorism. You're a white male and the only people that were killed or non-white people, two thirds of the victims, black males, one older, I think in his 40s, the other one 17 years old, and then the last victim, a 75 year old Hispanic woman who's, who, who had the package delivered to her home, uh, possibly by mistake, because it was probably supposed to be delivered to the black woman next door, whose last name is Mason. That is terrorism, the definition of terrorism. But I may come back with more videos. Please go to Tori and Rain Reloaded, Nicole's View, Lisa Cabrera, um, the True Royal Family, and the 1LVZ Live. He just did a live video this morning. I was asleep, it was like three in the morning when he was, for me, when he was recording. Uh, and or maybe around five in the morning because I think it was eight for him and uh, the bitter truth show with Monsante Bay please go check out their channels as well to see if they have any information about the Austin bombings because they did videos about the bombings as they were occurring this is it for me for this video you guys stay safe out in the streets like they say stay vigilant and that's very interesting that they said earlier this week people should stay in their homes people were keeping their children home from school people were staying home from work now they're saying to stay vigilant it took people at that hotel being vigilant and not being afraid to recognize this guy is suspicious they saw something they said something and they did not obey the law what the law was saying was to just stay in your home and ignore it we'll take care of it well clearly you all came pretty much after the fact so stay vigilant stay aware we talked about being vigilant last night on the live stream staying aware not being paranoid but staying aware of your surroundings understanding your enemy your environment and your condition the jedi talks about this a lot as well Shout out to Proverbs 31. Shout out to the real Aaron Collins. Um, Craig J. Lightbearer. I'll talk to you all later. Have a great day.